So welcome everybody. Thank you for coming. Great crowd. I'm very impressed. And uh, so uh, for those of you coming here today expecting that you're going to have all the answers to your IT strategy and how to put it together in the next 25 minutes or so. It's a little bit optimistic. I'll do the best I can, but it is a little bit optimistic. Um, the good news is, however, um, and a couple of you I recognize from, from have been to these events and will hopefully tell you that they're quite good because lots of people do. Um, we have a whole day event that we run for free for schools. Um, uh, We've done a number of them. We'd started it, um, a colleague of mine, Jeff, and I did them. Started it three years ago. We thought, what if we do something on IT strategy and see if anybody turns up? Well, lots of people turned up. Lots of people have, keep have kept turning up. We've spoken to about 200 schools in the last few years, um, uh, either online, obviously, in recent times, or in person. And the feedback we get is amazing. And we keep thinking, should we change it up? And we don't change it up because people enjoy it and people get a lot out of it. And a lot of multi-academy trusts and small primaries have taken some of the advice and help we've given and actually made that their strategy. Um, and uh, and uh, I've seen it I've seen it differently branded um, from the stuff that we gave and some of the slides that you'll see as their strategy and they get a lot out of it and they've moved their schools forward. So, uh, so hopefully you'll get a, come away with a few good ideas and hopefully you'll be inspired to come, come to some of our events. We've got one in um, West Bromwich next week and we've got another one in our, in our London office just across the road uh, a few weeks after that. And then we'll be having quite a few next academic year. So. Introduction, who am I? Um, I'm Richard Martin, Digital Transformation Lead at LGFL. I um, do a number of different roles at LGFL. I work with all our fantastic partners that you will know that provide IT support in your schools. Um, I, I, I do a number of projects and I help with IT strategy. Um, formally, and where it's relevant to what we're talking about today, I used to be the CIO for ARC Academy Trust. I used to be the head, head of IT for the Girls' Day School Trust, which if it ends in high school for girls, it's probably a GDST school, uh, biggest independent uh, schools group in the UK. There isn't a boys' day school trust. Um, 20,000 pupils, 26 schools. Um, ARCs, 37 schools, uh, 25,000 pupils or so. So, um, so just give you ideas. And uh, prior to that, spent a lot of time in corporate IT. So that's, that's why hopefully I put strategies in in both of those um, where they didn't exist before. So this is what I'm going to talk about. A little bit of a case study on that. I'm going to whistle through this at a rapid pace, um, and obviously we talk about this for a whole day normally, so I'm going to try and wrap it down for 20 odd minutes now. So, um, so talking about the what's, what's the elephant in the room, we've got, we can't not talk about strategy without talking about what's happened in the last couple of years. How has it affected it? Well, it's affected it a lot, clearly. Um, one of the challenges I really had um, when I went to both uh, GDST and ARC was that actually some of the senior education personnel in those organizations I had to win over from the whole concept of, is there any value in IT in education? What value does it bring? What is the point? Um, and fortunately, I think a lot of that conversation now has gone away. That's the big change in the last few years. You're not having that conversation now. The fact that it's um, digital platforms are mandatory and it's, it's part of the Ofsted has also focused the mind a little bit more as well, which didn't exist certainly when I came into uh, education. Um, so, and, and I'm not hearing from any of the schools and Matt's I talked to that, okay, well, we want, want to roll back from where we are now in, in terms of digital platforms. Um, and if anything positive has come out of this at all, and I'm clutching at straws here with positive out of the pandemic and everything, but it's shown, it's shown, it's shown, a, shown shone even a light on the digital divide. Digital divide was always there. Um, but I think it's put it in the mainstream, it's put it in conversation um, and and some, things, some good things have been done about it. There's an awful lot more to do, but at least it's a topic now that people get and aren't, and, it, and it's, it's in the mainstream. And I think if that, that's a positive, if nothing else. It's, it's, and, and any IT strategy that you're pulling together for your schools or your multi-academy trusts has got to address that in some way, shape or form. So pulling the strategy together, um, uh, one of the things that I think you, that a mistake can be made when, and I, I get, I got heads in, Matt's and Elisa, it's, it's all about teaching and learning. It's got to be focused totally, completely on teaching and learning. Well, yes and no. Obviously, that's important. That's because why everybody's here. But there's a bit of a challenge with that because there's not a great deal of data, um, and probably should have asked Kat while she was here earlier, but um, that actually proves that the more you spend and the more you put into technology <laughs> will actually improve outcomes for children. There's not a great deal of proof that actually proves that, but... Um, I think the reason, hopefully, that most of you are here and that come to our other conferences is that 
Actually, I mean, I've got, I've got three children, two grown up ones have just come through education and a little one that's starting his education. And I wouldn't want them to go to a school that had no technology in it. Um, and uh, my two older ones are both now working and they use, they're heavily involved in technology. Don't know what job, I don't think any of us knows what job the little one's going to do um, when, he, when he comes through. But I'm going to put some money on the fact that it's going to have technology involved in it. So yes, I think we need that. The other two, much more pro pro proven, all the studies in the world will tell you that those two other elements um, are improved by technology and made more efficient. Um, if you look around the offices that, that sort of envelop this, uh, this facility and outside our, our um, offices, all those companies have technology, full of technology. Um, why is that? Is it because it's nice and they like the look of it? No, it's because it makes them more productive and makes them more, more successful. So that equally applies in a small primer as it does in a, in a mat. You get that right, it makes a massive difference. Um, and one of the things, if anybody's not heard of, um, of ARC schools, one of the things it was very famous for in its early days was, um, was how it looked after data and how it used data for uh, early intervention. Because um, uh, ARC, so ARC, if you don't, haven't heard of them, they take over failing schools, they turn them around, they've got a pretty good track record at doing that. Um, and, uh, and, and one of the main things that really made that difference and made, helped them do it so quickly was the way they used data. Now, lots of mats have caught up and arguably overtaken that now and do an equally good job, if not better, of, of analyzing that data, but ARC were very much pioneers in that. Um, so, um, and again, that's got to be a core part of any strategy, is, is, the, is, is how you use that data and how you analyze it, um, and how you make it really easy for teachers to use that data. Um, so teachers aren't spending, I know this from my experiences of a, go, a school governor, I talk a lot more about this on the day, but, but if getting the data is really hard for the teachers, then it's not right. The data has to be served to the teachers as easy as possible, and then they do something with the data. They don't spend the time creating the data or finding it. It's that time that they spend at data is making data useful and changing outcomes for, parent, for, for pupils. So coming, talking about outcomes, um, so when I was pulling this strategy together, um, particularly at ARC, um, you go out and ask everybody what they want. Um, and most, the, the, the one thing I had come back was from the teachers, just want it to work. I've got my board, I've got my PC, I've got, I just, just make it work. It doesn't work, I can't trust it. I go home and do some work. I'm trying to bring it into the school. It doesn't work in the school, but it worked at home. This, oh, it's just, just make it work. And you kind of say, well, yeah, I'm, brought in to, to run IT, I'm going to make it work, but once it works, what do you want it to do? How do you want to progress? But they couldn't get past that. I, can't, I don't blame them because the stress was, I just want it to work. It doesn't, I can't see the point where it works and then, then I'll think about it, but just make it work. Let me do the things that I, think, I know I can do and I've got around me, make that work. So it was quite difficult to think, what's the future going to look like? And having those conversations, quite a challenge um, to, to get people to that point was, was a real challenge. Um, and. Uh, but yeah, so they just wanted it to work. Um, and also, we could, we could talk all the day about different learning styles and all that, but we're not going to because I'm, I'm down to minutes now. So uh, how do, yeah, I think it, it, even if you've got different views on different learning styles and how that applies to technology or not, in, as the case may be, I think if you take the SEND provision, I think we can all be universally agreed that technology will help in, in in inclusion, inclusivity, and send. Absolutely it will. Um, so we, we could agree on that. Um, and again, coming back to your um, admin side, um, yes, of course, automate, automate and repeatable tasks. Um, uh, say, as a parent, um, I'm still now on, now on the third going through the school bag and, and sort of fishing out a piece of paper with a bit of banana on it and trying to make out what that is. Uh, is that the best form of communication um, in, in today's world? It's not how everybody else in the world communicates with me. Um, so trying to fight what this bit of food is and what I'm supposed to sign and trying to scribble on a yeah, yeah, nasty piece of paper um, to give them the signature that they need. Is that the best way of communicating? I think probably not in the mod modern world it probably has its place uh, but it's probably not the best way to communicate with the parents and you want that engagement um, so we drilled a bit more into into what the teachers do because it's more than just teach particularly <laughs> teachers have all these pressures all these things to do so where can technology specifically help so this is what putting the strategy together comes we say talk about look this one we'll have a whole day to talk about it but it's what are all these things Break it down, break it down. And, and where can technology specifically help? And this is, we haven't, I haven't mentioned what type of technology, it's not, it's not relevant. You, you come to that afterwards, once you've sorted out what all the, all the objectives are, all the outcomes are, how are you gonna, what, what do you need to do? And then you find the technology to do it. 
Um, if you're talking about technology starting with iPads or talking, starting with a named device, you're talking, starting from the wrong place. You start from outcomes. What are you trying to achieve? What's going to make life better? What's going to, what's going to make that school better, more efficient, outcomes better for the pupils? What's going to help you? So, and it's all this kit. All these, all these different things. Break it down, break it down. What's specific for you? Um, this is the one where everybody takes a picture of, generally, <laughs> and uh, gets excited about. And this is the one I'm going to spend a little bit more time on, because um, I think it's, in, it's important. Um, so once I'd gathered what the outcomes... You didn't have to take a picture of it. I was just... <laughs> I was just um, but uh, once we'd worked out what we wanted the outcomes to be, it was where are we at? Where are we at, as a, as a, in our case, a multi-academy trust, but equally where are you at as a small primary, if that's, if that's what you are? And where do you want to be? Um, so, and I borrowed this um, and, and adapted it quite heavily, but I borrowed it. So credit to Lee Academy Trust for showing this, me this idea in the first place. There's no monopoly on good ideas. Um, so I went through all the schools and we, we fairly rigidly marked them as to where we were. Um, and, uh, and this was a lot about, okay, and, and I knew what I was coming into when I went into ARC. Schools massively underinvested, hadn't bought kit for years, um, Whatever it was, it was plainly obvious we were going to have to spend a lot of money. And I was going to have to convince people to spend a lot of money that, frankly, they could have spent on teachers or something else, um, buildings, whatever. Um, so I was going to have to fight for that piece of cash. Um, now, if I'd have gone into our um, uh, executive board uh, and said, do you know what? It's in a really bad state. And they knew that was coming. Uh, I'd say, but I want X very large number uh, to fix it. The answer would have been, yeah, but can you do it for X little bit smaller number? Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, then we'd have been shaving bits off and talking that forever. Where I went, where Walls was, if you look back at that, pre think back to those previous slides, these are the outcomes that we, which outcomes do you want? So I had a list of outcomes that was that one, that one, and that one. We didn't care about those two because that's, that's where we were, frankly. We were, our schools were in zero and one, and some of the schools did a bit of two, but you went to another part of the school and it was a bit pretty much more one or maybe zero. So... Overall, they were, they were zero or one. Um, and uh, so what would it, what was a day look like for a pupil, for an admin staff, for a teacher in that, that, and that? What does it look like? And I'm not progressing here that everybody should be aiming for four, because you might not want to teach like that. But they're three different options. And, and again, this is a few years old. You might have different ones the way you want to do. But what, what levels do you want to get? And, um, and what does it look like? And behind this was the two big spreadsheets, one which had what that day looked like for all the different people concerned. And the other one had a big spreadsheet of what it was going to take to deliver two, three, and four. What kit would we actually need to buy? What, you know, all the hardware, all the servers, all the services that we would need to buy into, what would we need to achieve for, against all of those? And you can probably guess that that one was more expensive than that one. Um, and uh, so our chief exec looked at this and gave the answer that I was probably expecting, if I'm honest, I want everybody to be a number two. The very least, all of my schools should be a number two. And ideally, I'd like the zero schools to get to the two to be sorted first, if that's possible. That's what I want. It's kind of good answer. It's what I expected. Um, that's the very least we should have, isn't it? And um, at which point, then it was the big reveal. <laughs> okay, yeah, here's the really big number that makes number two. It's not as big as number three and four, but it's the really big number that makes number two. At which point she turned to the finance director and said, well, how are we going to find that money? Rather than saying to me, I want that number to go down. I said, well, that's what it is. That's what it takes. And, and it flipped the conversation. Um, and I think you can see where that was going is that we actually, how do we find the money? And, uh, and the interesting thing, and I know there's a few partners in the room, uh, but uh, the one thing, well, was, was good news in a way in that we didn't have all that money in one go, clearly, because it was a really, really big number. But two, I, didn't, I don't believe, I still don't believe, there is a partner that can deliver all that in the summer. Because everybody always says, okay, you'll do it in the summer then, won't you? Well, no, we won't, because that's what everybody else is doing. There wasn't a part, there isn't an IT partner that knows education that's going to deliver all that in one summer for us, because they're doing it for everyone else. Um, and that if, if you force them down the route, of course, they'll all say, yeah, we'll do that for you. I'll take that check straight, straight away, please. Thank you very much. Um, but they won't do it, and they'll have to subcontract loads of out, and the experience will be awful. But the good news was we were going to do it over a period of time, because that's sensible. Um, and yes, we were going to try and do all the zeros first, but actually there were a couple of really quick wins in the ones. You might as well fix them, make them two straight away, because it's easier and it's quick to do. And some of the zero schools weren't ready to be changed. You could change them all you like, but they weren't ready to be changed, and they weren't going to get the benefit out of being made a two 
straight away because it would be 12 months before they caught up with using the two to make it happen. So, so this, was, this is a really important part, so I'll labour this one a little bit. Um, so, and then it was about, and I'll talk a lot about this, I'll rush through this one, but um, you're pulling together this team. There was only me in IT because everything had been outsourced when I first went to ARC, um, and then we brought some great people in. Um, but when I say team, it's everybody else you, you need to help you deliver this. Um, and in my case, it was legal because we needed to get out the contract we were in. So that was quite important. HR, because I was going to insource some staff back into the organisation. Um, and it was finance because we had to find the money um, from all sorts of different pots. Uh, and it was complicated. Um, whole discussion about how IT is financed and, and actually finding out how much you pay in the first place and therefore how much you can save to pay for this um, strategy. Um, talk a lot about that. But... That's a lot more complicated than you think. That's a whole discussion um, in itself. So, so getting that team on board and giving them a clear me message and list of what they need to do is really important. And then it's on to your stakeholders. Um, and whether that's a tiny school or it's a, um, a massive mat of, of 37 schools all up and down the country, it's how do you engage these stakeholders? Um, because you're going to have some people that are absolutely on side with you. Oh, you. This is the breath of fresh air. I've always wanted this. You know, we, we can do this with education, we can do this with technology, da, 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 da. And there's going to be the ones on the other side of that, either completely disengaged. There is no point to this. I'd rather have another teaching assistant than you spend money on, um, on technology. Um, and, and it's how do you address those dissenters? How do you get them on side? What I did, I created this inclusive steering group. I invited some of the biggest dissenters to it, which raised a few eyebrows in the organisation I was working for, I have to say. But it worked. It absolutely worked. Because most of the time they had a point. They perhaps didn't always put that point across in the best way. They had a point. Um, and going to see them face to face on their turf, whether it's going into their classroom if you're a small school or schlepping up to wherever, Birmingham, to actually sit down with them and see this PC that takes 40 minutes to start, where frankly I'd have believed them if they told me it takes 40 minutes to start, don't actually have to, but actually having to sit in the room for 40 minutes watching it start because they wanted to make the point. And if they want to make that point, let them make that point. But at least, you know, they can't say they weren't included, they can't say they were pulled out of it. And it's, and it's again... How are you going to deal with your stakeholders? Because ignoring the ones that aren't on your side will derail your, de derail your strategy. Because if you're not talking to them, they're talking to everybody else in the staff room. Um, so it's really, really important to get all stakeholders engaged, even if they don't like what you're saying or think you're not doing the right thing, but engage them. And governors is another one. Um, very well-meaning governors with an IT background who've never worked in a school or understand what works in schools. Sometimes they're a great benefit, sometimes they're a real challenge. Uh, it's not corporate IT. It's much more, co they'll hate this. They'll hate you saying it's more complicated than that. You don't have safeguarding in corporate IT. You don't have loads of people using the same device in corporate IT. That's what's make, that what makes it complicated. Um, and that doesn't happen in corporate. Everybody has one device and works on it. Wouldn't that be lovely? I mean, we're going to one-to-one, -one, hopefully, more, in more and more in schools. But uh, yeah, those of, you, those of you that have to deal with this day-to-day, -day, wouldn't that be lovely if somebody else wasn't pulling the thing out every five seconds and doing something different on it? So moving this strategy forward, communication is always the one. If you look at, I mean, I've worked in lots of really, really big projects, both in schools and, and uh, education, but also in corporate. And if you look at all the really big projects, the ones that failed, the ones that were successful, what's, if you look at them and say, what could, what could we have done better? And even the ones that once went swimmingly well, how could we have made it even better? We could have communicated better. The ones that have crashed and burnt and gone horrible, well, if we'd have communicated a bit better, probably we, we overcommitted, we did this, we did this. It's always communication, always. So make that a focus. How are you going to get this message across? Because if you're doing a big IT strategy, there's going to be a whole load of time where generally you've got to fix the foundations. So as far as teacher sitting in classroom trying to teach using this awful technology doesn't work properly, you've spent months doing nothing as far as they're concerned. Nothing. And at the best, you've made it a bit, made whatever they're doing already a bit more reliable before you can actually make something better that works in their classroom. So making sure they understand that, that you're not actually doing nothing, you're, you're fixing stuff that's going to make that experience better is really, really important. How do you get that point across? You need to know what ha works in your school. Uh, it's no good. If you've got schools that don't read emails, don't send them emails. Um, and you know, I know some schools, the only way to get the message across is actually stick something on the staff from notice board and people read it. And if that's what it takes in that school, then do that in that school. It's, it's whatever works for the school, not for you. Uh, and you might have to have 10 different forms of communication to get the same message out. But if you want teachers to get the message, 
do them. You know, it might even be the letter that they take home in their bag with a sticky banana, but whatever it takes is, is, is you've got to communicate with them, not the other way around, to know what's happening in the project. And then how do you measure it? Um, so I think you need to be very honest about the finances, lessons learned, yeah, yeah. spoiler alert, it's gonna be communication. Um, go back to that maturity level. All that stuff I said was behind it, it's the maturity level, it's, it's like, did we do the things we said we were going to do in that strategy? Are we doing them and are we getting there? Or have we just bought a load of kit and actually think the, the experience hasn't changed? Um, and the customer feedback is the most important one, absolutely most important one. Go back to the teacher that said, just make it work and say, does it work now? Does it work now? Because that's, that, that's, that's the difference between a failed strategy and a successful strategy. Does it work now? Is it doing what you want it to do? Because when you do, it will, that's when you'll get the questions and you'll, you'll get the, the progressive, yeah, it does work now, and guess what I'd like to do with it? Um, and that's where your strategy actually progresses into a real outcome-focused, making a difference policy. So a quick, um, say I'm whistling through this at rate of nuts, so rate of knots, nuts. Um, so infrastructure stabilized, scale sustainable and scalable. It's gotta, it's gotta work. The other thing you think about your strategy, especially if you're coming from a bad place where you, you're underinvested, you put a load of money in, and you fix it. So that is fantastic for the children that start at the day you've got the new kit. But what happens in three, four years time when that kit's four years old and the new kids are coming in to four year old kit? It's starting to fail a bit at that point. It's getting a bit ropey, isn't it? Five year olds, it's all, five years later, it's awful. And you've got a whole new like, bunch of kids coming in. So that's, that's where you know, it's sustainable. This kit has a shelf life. Even write a shelf life, shelf life on it. How long do you think it's gonna live? So that's when you need to replace it. Is it in your budget to replace it at that point? I'm not saying you rip out kit that's still working, but you need to be financed and ready to, ready to refund it. Because why should, that, why should kid in year three get a worse experience than kid in year one? Just because they're unlucky that when you bought the, the kit? That can't be right, can it? Um, and one thing I didn't, I, I will talk about a lot is how you structure it. The, the use of apprentices in schools, absolutely amazing. And in terms of, if you want to change outcomes, if you want to get, a real impact is you need you do need bodies on the ground. Um, some of the some of the I know some of our partners are doing a more of a remote service going forward, um, which is why. But what you need is if you make your, if you move your kit into the cloud, you need help. This teachers this this is getting more complicated for teachers on a day to day basis. They need more help to actually use stuff. If if you take the reliability things away, so and I said this to my staff at the time in terms of. Um, What's the motion of travel for staff working at ARCs? We took a lot of them back. Um, the motion of travel is your, you, get, you come out of your server room and you spend more time in the staff room. That is your motion of travel. Um, and I said to them, if you don't want to do that, we had outsourced partners that did some of the really techie stuff. We'll, we'll talk about how you can transition into those guys in the long term if you're really techie and don't want to do the, do, do the staff facing stuff and helping users. But that's the motion of travel. And this is where the apprentices come in because a lot of that stuff is... Um, it's not massively technical to get, get teachers working to help them, um, and the apprentices can really help with that. Um, and uh, as I say, when, I, when we brought in apprentices um, the first time, we had, um, as I say, I thought we'd lose half of them because we'd never done apprentices before, and I didn't, and our people weren't used to mentoring them and all of that. Um, 15 of the ones that came in a few years ago and are now full time techs, we kept them all. They're much better than you ever thought they would be. It absolutely blew my blew my imagination away of how engaged they were. Um, and now 34, of the legacy is 34 or 38 apprentices have now been promoted to technician roles. So they've actually moved on, they moved up, they make a massive difference. They are lower cost, um, it's not why you should do it, but they are lower cost and you've got to, got to control your budgets. They can make a massive difference. And thinking about that, um, we've got some great partners, primary goal, uh, so we've got Louise over there, she's in the tech village. Uh, the, the partners we used aren't around anymore, um, but I think we probably would have spoken to Primary Goal if, uh, if it's worth, worth having a conversation about what they can do for you. Also the digital champions thing, who's going to lead this strategy, what training and help do they need to pull this strategy together? Louise has got an answer for that, so definitely have a word with her about that if, if, if it's of interest. Um, so down the last couple of minutes. So again, once, once we've got over the, the does it work yet, um, this is when these discussions start. Um, the technology will change in part of your strategy, of course it will. Uh, different technologies, there's going to be te technologies that are going to come out next year that I haven't even heard of, even thought about, that might have an impact on education. Um, processes are the same, that uh, tying it to your outcomes is what's important. Doesn't matter what the technology is, 
Um, you choose what's best at the time um, and you work with your partners. If they're any good, they'll be telling you that. Um, and uh, and it's, so this is not a one hit thing. It's not one hit, well, we'll, we'll put a strategy in, then it's done and we'll forget about it for five years. No, um, everybody knows that there's a turnover in teachers. How are we expecting the same teachers, the new teachers to come in to use the technology and, and the, in the way that you do? There's got to be ongoing training and bringing them up to, and just, and, and the, oh, they're young teachers, they'll pick it up. They're good, young people are good at technology. No, that's not, that's not the way it works. Um, so it's making this work. And so just very quickly to wrap up, um, got alliance to your vision, as I said, sustainable, get the right organizations, partners to work with. We talk a lot about this and how you do that on the, on the day when we do our day sessions. Um, and, uh, and the senior leaders have to be engaged. You can't do this as an island. Uh, you haven't got that engagement, this strategy will never work. Um, so very quickly, um, last minute, um, Something to help you here. This is in beta form at the moment. This is growing. We've created a, a digital transformation framework tool. It's an audit tool. It's in beta. It's a little bit rough and ready at the moment. But this is to, to enable you to self-evaluate where you're at on your strategy where, um, and what you've got, what you have. And it's got lots of items in it. Um, going forward, it will have lots of advice as well. So if you've marked yourself low, think actually we don't have that component of a strategy. And this is on teaching, learning side and the technical side, that on the security side, everything. Oh, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm not, you don't even know what that is. So you click on that, there'll be advice. It will take you to links, both um, LGFL generated ones and other ones, external ones, that will help you with those bits. And then you can go away and do those bits. And, um, and that will help. This is going to grow over time. This is going to get better. As I say, it's a bit rough and ready at the moment, but yeah, keep on it. If you want to test it at the moment and give us feedback, that'd be fantastic. Really, really useful. But hopefully this will be a really, and it'll be, always be a free tool, uh, be useful for you. Um, and as I say, if you want to know more, um, uh, and this was useful to you, albeit at 100 miles an hour, uh, a slightly slower version where we all get together and collaborate in a, in a room and you get to talk to your peers, which is probably as important, if not more important than talking to me, um, about your own strategy thing. We had one this week. It was great, fantastic crowd. Um, I've got one in, say, West Bromwich uh, next week and another one on the 19th. Come and talk to us. IT partners are allowed if they bring a school with them um, because it's all about the schools. Um, we need to fill the room with schools. But if you bring a school with you, your IT partners are, are, ha are happy to come with you so that they can maybe translate something for you. But it's not technical, it's strategic. We don't talk about technology, we talk about strategy. So, um, so yeah, there's a book in that, that free to all schools, whether you're in LGFL or not. And that's me. Thank you very much.